Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast roundup. Uh, last week was the audio wasn't the best, but we promise this week's going to be a cracker. Tiff's got his headphones, so we're all set for an absolute cracker, even though what, there wasn't that much racing going on. But we got the F1 driver lineup confirmed for 2024, and it's super exciting. Can't wait to share that with you. Uh, WRC as well, driver lineup, but it's a bit more of a musical chairs situation there. Uh, Autosport Awards, that was over the weekend, so that's uh, going to be interesting. We'll go through the young drivers there, and we decide. The top 10 of Formula 1 teams in the order of happiness uh, place to be, the happiest place to be. And, of course, <laughs> Tiff's favourite, the uh, extreme e-buggies in Chile. I'm not going to call them buggies. You call them buggies. The extreme e-racing um, in Racing Chile. what? Racing cars? Racing what? Racing each other against the clock. You can race racing. against the clock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, are you, so Tiff, how, are you, what? how are you going to describe the vehicles, though, then? If they're not buggies, how are you going to describe an extreme say- e-vehicle? Their off-road uh, SUVs. What, 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 what do you class a, a Dakar car? One of the the Audi e-tron GT. Blah, 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 yeah, a Dakar is. car. Yeah, move on. All right. <laughs> and, you know, before we go to any other news, but more importantly, I see you've been tweeting our preview little show of uh, of the second series of Love Cars on the Road. Um, when are we going to see it anywhere? I mean, we've had it in the can. <laughs> And it's such a little top gear going and <laughs> and, and, and the boys, they say they're not doing any more of their what should we call it. Um, it's surely it's ready to go. I mean, I, the teaser keeps on teasing me because I know how well, good the films are. If you're lucky enough, to, uh, lucky enough to live in Japan or South Africa or I think Romania. They've uh, seen it. They've seen it. They've all seen it. So it's, it's, it's live there. But it's a very complex situation, as you know. So we go through a distributor. Our distributor gets what they think is the best deal in terms of financial return. Not necessarily the best deal in terms of um, awareness and promotion. Because we actually had an opportunity. Last time, as you know, obviously, we're on I. ITV4 in the UK, we had an opportunity to have uh, three of the series, three of the episodes of series two on ITV4, and the other three on ITV1. But it, but it fell happen. through. Um, well, you're talking about talking about ITV, though, you can see our first series now on ITV X, is it? It, it, yeah, so that's the right ITV, ITV hub. It's called, no, it's called ITV the ITVX. So it's on the main ITV hub. And a few, I think a few of our tweeters, Stu, and a few of the others are uh, going back and yeah. watching that yeah. to, to reminisce. But um, the, 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 the latest is that it will probably, should I say probably, possibly, maybe, um, whatever caveat you want to put before it, be on Amazon Prime. Oh. In all And all of the uh, countries that it's not available uh, that is currently available won't be available in Amazon Prime, but it will be in all the others. Good Does that news. make sense? Right. Really good, good. news. So there's your so Christmas it's frustrating. Week. TV's Christmas frustrating. TV's frustrating. We got a Go bunch to ITV of... Hub yeah. then. Christmas for yeah. ITV Hub. Look at Series 1, and then hopefully in January, February, we'll have Series 2. Good. Right. Somewhere. Good news. <laughs> Formula what have you 1. Got in the news, yes. Well, Formula 1, not that exciting. Logan you gave Sargon. a big build up. Is that your sarcasm there? <laughs> it was pretty much as expected. Though. Logan Sargent's probably not been sleeping very well for about the past three months, but he has been confirmed at Williams. So we've got exactly the same driver lineup, which is the first time in 300 years, according to some tweets or something. I don't know. Maybe um, better ask the boy who statistics man to <laughs> tell us that. Um, so, yeah, I like Logan Sargent getting a second year. Um, Do you? you know, he's, Yes, I, th- I always think two years. Like, it's very hard when you step up that big step. Um, and uh, he's, I think the team have supported him very well all year. I think they've seen they like the cat. He obviously works well within the team because they like him and they've always encouraged and said, you know, we're going to hopefully keep him. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I don't obviously we don't know about money. Does he bring any money? You never quite know the full story. But I think he's deserved. I mean, he was runner up to Piastri in the Formula 3. You know, he's had a good junior um, career. I think it's good. You give him a second. I think towards the end of the season, he was getting within point two of. Um, he, he he was getting Alex better, but yeah. But that's after twenty know, races. I think they're saying, well, they're saying, who else would you take? And this is a problem, you know, because a lot yeah. of the um, the Formula Two champions like Drugovic and uh, Pouchet, they're already signed up with uh, Sal, I think Pouchet, and of course Drugovic is Aston Martin. So if you wanted to get one of those two Formula champions, you probably have to pay the team money to get them out. Um, yeah, this, it's a, obviously there is a risk of, of taking on youngsters, although we would encourage teams to do so. But I think yeah, he's got through the, the youngsters. Yeah, I think always should have two years. As I put on my I tweet, don't... 
Yeah, I, th- so I think a year. Two. I said, yeah, I always think they should have two years, and I put not seven, Lance. <laughs> Who's now in seven seasons. Lance, get over it with Lance Troll. If my father owned, seven seasons, uh, uh, if my had. father owned a race team, I'd be delighted to, oh, to race for I'm an Indy car drive. About I'm an Indy car drive. Bitching <laughs> and moaning that I've got to drive. Lance Stroll, good on you, mate. I think stay there. But but I think it's the others, Tiff. It's a, it's the Hulkenbergs and the Bottasses of this world that, that they've got to make way. Yeah, they we'll mention those to. later. We do our happen. Okay. We'll mention those later. Um, yeah, good news also in the, in the rally world for Britain, for Wales especially, because um, bizarrely, very bizarrely, Kalia Rothenberg, I mean, just won his second temperature on the spot. I'm still only about 12 years old. I'm not sure how old is he, 21 or 22, I don't know. <laughs> it's decided to go part-time. Now, Toyota had Sebastian Ogier the last couple of years now doing part-time and winning a couple of rallies. So Cal, he's done a lot of drifting, apparently. He's a drift fanatic and maybe wants to go. But he's sort of, I think he's, well, I think it's quite interesting, a bit like the carters that end up in Formula One. You know, he's been driving cars, you know, since he was two. Um, and so every year of his life, he's just been doing cars. And so I think he's just stepping back, which I quite like. But this means Elfin Evans now will be leading the Toyota title runners. Um, the only other full-time Toyota man is going to be uh, the Japanese guy, Takamoto Katsuta, who does have occasional flashes of brilliance and looks quick. But Elfin should dominate that team. Um, Sebastian Auger also another part-time season. So it's bizarre in, in a sort of high level of sport, any sport in the world. There's no sort of part-time footballer. You know, what's that big tall bloke <laughs> in Manchester City called? Um, Harland. Harland so says, well, I'll just do a couple of games a month. I'm not going to... So we've got two world champions going part-time. Um, so that's Toyota. The but, I say a but whether Elfin's going to cruise it, because um, Hyundai have been getting quicker and quicker. Ot Tanak has left the Ford team to go back to Hyundai. So Tanak and Nerville. I was just going to say. Lined up. Yeah, I was Pretty, just going mean, to say, poor old Elfin. I reckon he's going to be the bridesmaid again. He should. <laughs> he should. Yeah. But Elfin, so I think Elfin's going to buy. Gonna buy- be behind the um the Hyundai's because they oh, are no. showing real pace at the end. Yeah, and reliability. The, the problem there was a mm. pace for the last because the, they had more trouble with their hybrid um, involvement the last couple of years than the others did. So Escapacalapi, who could finish second in the, in the championship, six, not second, six. He's a part timer with uh, Hyundai. I don't know whether Danny Sordo is coming back. So, whereas Ford, who've lost Tanak, and don't have a huge budget, they seem to be saying they're just going to use rookies, which I like. But there aren't many rookies with. I mean, rallying you do need a lot of experience. We've seen um, Oliver Solberg and you know, got into the world race, sort of cracked under pressure, crashed a lot. So it looks like they're going to use these two Frenchmen, Pierre Louis Loubet, or Louis Louet, as I would say, um, <laughs> and Adrian Formo. But both of them have had part time seasons with Ford, and both of them seem to end up in the bushes more often than the finish line. So it's a, a strange thing. I mean, I would go actually for the WRC two champion, Andreas Mickelson, who's been in the WRC World Championship five years ago or more, or maybe bring Oliver Solberg back for a really strong year in WRC two. And yet they seem to be going to persevere with these two French boys. But um, so it's a weird one. And the championship starts in I think they're testing in Monaco, Monte Carlo, in January the twenty first. Wow, about five, five or six weeks away, you've got to have your lineup fixed. So, oh. um, yeah, interesting. Shit. The world running show is an interesting place, there's only about six cars in it, really. Um, effectively, uh, so, um, yeah, it needs another manufacturer was... desperately or two more manufacturers. Mm, but who's going to come into that? Uh, dying sport. I was chatting to Jeffrey Ulliet, Uli- I think his name is. Sorry, Jeffrey, for not getting your last name, it's Jeff to me in Barbados because Barbados do a massive rally, the Barbados yeah. rally, sort of June, July time all around the roads, all around the island. And he's a, a bit of a, a, a sort of local folk hero over there. And he was uh, saying the same as us. You know, it's a dying sport because of spectators. Yeah. It's great when you can go down the road. And it goes crazy yeah. in Barbados. But, uh, yeah, and, he's, and he gave Joe and Fred a lift home. 
in a, like a Skoda Fabio or something. Apparently, he was going sideways in this the standard car. Very good driver. Uh, and there's no uh, drink driving, no drink driving limits in, uh, no drink driving laws in Barbados. Can you believe well, that? So he had a skin. <laughs> he's driving the boys home. Um, the, the recommendation well, they give is just keep it in second gear. If, you, if you're going to have a few drinks, keep it in second gear. So you don't, don't give them second fast. gear. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> anyway, so so line up completed there from one. Line up still musical chairs in the rally to be a standard. Then, of course, last time, the Autosport Awards, this wonderful gala dinner uh, where they, they have loads of awards. The most important one to me is the, the Autosport BRDC Young Driver, um, which I won the equivalent of the Autosport Awards. I won it in 1976. <laughs> How many years ago is that? Uh, that's coming up to nearly 50 years ago in a three years' time. And I won £1,000. Yeah. James Hunt presented the award. I won £1,000. Well, Joseph Loke... And the biggest smile on his face is he picked up a two hundred thousand pound. Hang on, hang uh, on a minute, price. hang on. For, that, that's forty three years ago, and you're seventy two, so you were twenty nine. And it's young no, drivers. Seventy six. Uh, seventy six. Yeah. So that's seventy six. So that's forty three. Forty seven years ago. It may be. <laughs> yeah, and and you're so you were you were. I was twenty five or 20, something. Twenty five, twenty six. Yeah. That's not bloody young. It was young in those days. <laughs> we, we didn't start racing to a 17. Karting didn't exist. Yeah, it's funny how it's rule changed. Of thumb, yeah. The rule of thumb is it takes 10 years to become a, a Grand Prix driver experience-wise. So, so I started, you know, I was 17. And yeah. I'd be wow. Grand Prix driver when I was 27. You know, because oh, I'd gone these, through Formula 4. These youngsters are so lucky well, now, aren't they? Well, they start at 8 and they're Grand Prix drivers at 18. It's, and what was it like, a different what, what was it like going on stage with James Hunt? Well, wonderful, obviously, I was getting there. Well, we both, we both the photos, we both had the same hairstyle, both had the uh, velvet suits that were trained. He'd just come back, from, you, just come back from Japan. Yeah, I know. He's still just, he'd just come back from Japan when he won the World Championship, that famous Fuji race. So he'd arrived from Japan as the champion, and I arrived um, as, as the next James Hunt. So my publicity, my sponsorship was all about Jeff Nadell, the next James Hunt. Nearly worked. Just because you have the same hairstyle. No, the same, the same talent. Hairstyle and suit. Same <laughs> talent. Six foot tall Englishman. Um, so yeah, Joseph Loke uh, won that. I mean, it's an amazing thing. What um, were you like back fun. in the day? Sorry, sorry, Joseph. To, to, to this is a big yes. moment for, for you and for us. But what was it like uh, taking that? Were you a good speaker back in the day, or did that come? Over I did time? a speech did you, live. Did you, yeah. Live yeah, but... on, on what would have been, what, what's that television program now, Five Live or the local news, but nobody ever recorded it, so I've never seen it since. So. It must be in the archives somewhere. Oh, but but no, were you good? Were you speech. eloquent? Were you confident? I thought I was brilliant, but I probably wasn't. But yeah. I was terrified, obviously. I've never, I mean, even now when filming, I get nervous. But after dinner speaking, filming's fine. I seem to be completely natural to a camera. But my after dinner speaks, speeches still terrify me when you're in front of a room of strangers and you. So, so, so let's get back to Joseph. I'm so sorry, Joseph. What? Congratulations, Joseph. Yes. And I just think, because now we've got this amazing stream of, of British talent uh, from, from Lewis down to Joseph Lowe that's queuing up to be Grand Prix drivers. And just to sort of look ahead where we're at, um, Lewis never won the award because he was a McLaren-sponsored driver and it used to be the McLaren Autosport Awards. It's now Aston Martin. So Lewis never entered the awards because he was disqualified. Uh, so we had George Russell won this in 2014. Uh, the year when Alex Alban was one of the finalists but didn't beat George. Uh, Lando won it in 2016. Uh, then, then in the queue, in the line, queued up. Zach O'Sullivan was the winner in 2021. He came second in F3 last year and he's doing Formula 2 this year. Going up against Ollie Berman, Ollie Behrman, who didn't win it, bizarrely, because I think he's the greatest talent we've got in this queue. Yeah. Uh, he was a runner-up. Well, a finalist. You never know who came second. Uh, both against Zach O'Sullivan and, a, and a, a finalist against Luke Browning, who won it last year, who recently won uh, the Monaco, the Monaco, Macau Formula 3 race. He had a, he's had a tough season in Formula 3, Luke Browning, but he did win at Macau. So, um, yeah, both Zach O'Sullivan and Luke Browning, according to the judges, weren't as worthy as Ollie Behrman, which still surprises me. Um and it's, but it's, it is funny how these awards, because you know we always say about you've got to get the Premier team to Formula 2, you've got to be in the best teams. So it's quite nice the judges are looking at these drivers. They drive a single-seater car, they drive a, a touring car, they drive Genesis, I forget what they drive, a whole variety of strange cars. Um, so they are looking at people in equal equipment. 
So, you know, they're saying maybe Zach and, and Luke are better than Ollie Behrman in equal equipment. And uh, Joseph Loke, in fact, he only finished third in the British GB3 yeah. Championship this year. And one of the people up against him in the final was Callum Voisin of Wazin, um, who won the championship. And yet um, they've deemed that uh, Joseph looks like the most pr more promising young driver. Taylor Barnard was also in the, 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 the final four. He finished 10th in Formula 3 last year. Um, and Arvid Lindblad, now he's a guy that people have been raving about, and I think a lot of people had him as maybe going to be winning this award. Uh, he's had less experience than the others. He did. Uh, he won the Macau Formula 4 race. You might have seen him in a Prima. He's a, he's a Swede, He's a British driver, born in Britain, of, of, in, of Indian and Swedish uh, ancestry, yeah. hence the Arvid Lindblad. And he came third in Formula 4 last year. So, um, interesting. Joseph Loke, maybe not the most obvious winner when you look at stats, and yet... Very, I mean, Derek Warwick leads the team. Very, Darren Turner is amongst the judging panel. Uh, so, very experienced judges have come yeah. out with Joseph Lowe. So, well done, Joseph. Let's I was, see yeah, how well it goes. Done. I was looking at his bio uh, earlier and um, 18 years of age from Maxfield, I think. I've got some stuff here. And you'd never guess who his favorite racing hero is. Uh, me. No, uh, you. Ayrton Senna. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> which is actually quite unusual and maybe that's just the stock re response for that type of thing because he's only 18 right, yeah. it's Senna right, died yeah. in 94 so he wasn't yeah. even around there but there well, you that, um, when, when you got those magazine quizzes like when I used to be a celebrity on big things like Top Gear you know <laughs> you know your top 10 ABs and, and I go in research you have to come up with a trendy answer you know you don't just come quickly say your answer you come up what what would people like me to say favorite I record did, i did you're gonna hate me for saying this but i did actually like the farage interview did so farage does this thing like him or hate him i yeah, oh, yeah, around. yeah. And, yeah. and you had a pint with farage and i actually i thought that was really good showing yeah. an insight as to you the tip of the day yeah. i thought you did a good good job there yeah. um so brdc uh autosport awards no surprises that uh, uh max verstappen won the international driver of the year and deservedly so just phenomenal setting records all over the place but the one thing i am there is going to be a but and the oh, but no. is everybody saying how mature he is this year and that's absolute codswallop he's oh, not you're off again he's, oh, no. no i'm just telling you yeah he's going to be upset again yeah he's going to be having a go a at you again he's a phenomenon he's fun he's unbelievable um but, but. it's it's all been too easy. He's had no competition yeah, in his yeah. team. He has no competition yeah, with, yeah. with any of the other teams. Um, so it's going to be, I really, really, really hope. If Max I think, continues I think, to be this dominant force, fantastic. But I really hope that he gets some competition. Well, so, yeah, a bit more aggro, yeah. But I, mean, I do like his Saki radio. I, mean, I don't like his Saki radio comments, you know. When the stewards gave him a five-second penalty in Vegas, they say, oh, send him my best regards or something. You know, he did. <laughs> God. But, then he, but, he, but then he did rubbish Las Vegas, which I quite enjoyed. So, yeah, he, I think he's always going to be a Marmite character. He has got that, you know, that... <laughs> bossy view, that sort of arrogant view in, in his background, which would, it's always going to come out. See, I look for a bit more pressure as well. And, Let's and you that. said this, you said this, as have many others, he off track is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, yeah. apparently. So, mm. uh, so you know, you, you've got to take people for, for how they are. But, but mm. you know what it's like? The visor goes down and it, you're a <laughs> different animal. So anyway, there we go. Autosport Awards. Where are we going next? We're going to our top 10. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my top 10 that you're going to comment on. So we all know the points, I mean, the points, who's the best team and who won everything. I decided to think about which was the happiest camp in the Formula One garages, behind the scenes, during the season, overall. Who was looking back at the year with fondest memories of a wonderful, happy season? Now, I would do my top 10. You can challenge it later. We'll discuss um, I want some music now. I want the you know, top 10 count. <laughs> In 10th, surely the least happiest camp Ferrari, must be, Fer must be, must be <laughs> Alfa Romeo. Two really? nobody Ferrari. midfield drivers. Um, we, we don't they're know happy. what their future... They've resigned them. They're happy. Ferrari, yeah. Ferrari yes. had this massive opportunity yes. and did nothing. Look, if you're going to be, if you're going to be this stroppy with my <laughs> first <laughs> story, when we've done the ten, you can you can All realign. Right. Them. All right. But looking okay. at the Alfa Romeo, right. the color, Alpha. color scheme was dull. Color scheme didn't come out on the telly very well. Two okay. midfield drivers. Neither driver got any sparkle in them. 
Um, Alfred, I've, I've got something. And what? Gap what's between it? best driver and worst, by the way. Um, wait, 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 wait. Alfred Romeo. Um, no, no, carry on. Okay, I'll let you do. I've got, okay, I'm just going to put the stat. The one stat I've got. Mark Hughes is a very good story. Motorsport magazine. Mark is one of the best Formula One journalists there is out there. Uh, but he, he's got the gap in qualifying. And he takes into account all, you know, weirdly going out in Q1s and not making Q3. And so he's this is his story about um, yeah. the gap. So I've just got each team. Bottas was an average of 0.172 faster than Guan Yu Zhao's. So wow. pretty average sort of gap, quite a good gap. But two average drivers in an average car, in an average colour scheme, don't know their identity next year. They're not even going to be Alfa Romeo next year. They're going to be Audi in 2026. So they might be Sauber next year. They've got a new sponsors. So they've got no identity. They live in Switzerland. They can't be very happy. And they only and came what, ninth in the points. Only ninth I, in the points. And who else? Who else ha- keeps getting on their feed on Instagram? I blocked it now. Bottas, his bot ass, his ass calendar 2024. Who wants to have oh, a man's yeah, naked, yeah. Yeah. Bum. Good for calendar. charity. Anyway, up the up going, going up in ninth spot. Mm-hmm. Surely Haas. Haas can't be very happy. I mean, Hulkenberg and Magnussen, two guys that are very quick and both very <laughs> likeable. They've been trolling around for years. They finished 10th in the points this year, despite occasionally great, qualifying bottom great of the Great hairstyles. Great hairstyles. Great hairstyles. Yeah. Stars of um, that TV programme, whatever it's called, with their team managers swearing everywhere. But otherwise, they can't be very happy at Haas, can they? Um so we dismissed them. Hulkenberg actually 0.284 faster than K-Mag on the overall season's gap, which I thought was quite surprising. They used to have one going quick and one slow, and then one go. never see them both on the same grid. Um, down in eighth spot, surely the most miserable pair of Frenchmen out, Alpine. Um, the narrowest gap between drivers, Ocon out-qualified Gasly by an average of 0.008 of a second. So very easy wow. even drivers, <clears throat> as we've seen. Because they're always miserable on the track. Because they're all the two French, and they're always moaning about each other on the radio all the time. <laughs> any any Alpine story, it's one driver moaning about the other. Only six in the points. This was a team that, you know, Renault said we're going to be winning races in two years' time, about 10 years ago. So Alpine can't be happy there. Um, down in seventh place, my first more controversial one than most of the other ones. I've dumped Mercedes. It's got to be the seventh most happy place to be at the moment. Miserable, horrible car. Drivers upset with each other on the radio. What's his name? Thumping the podium. Because they should be, they were second in the championship. But I'm not sure it's a happy place at all because they should have been winning. They should be challenging for wins. No, not a single win this year. Um, so I put yeah, Mercedes, despite being second in the points, Lewis, the seventh most. Lewis hasn't team. won since since twenty twenty one. No, and, and George out qualified Lewis according to this statistician from Mark by point oh one eight, the second closest team. But Russell actually edging Lewis in the qualifying things, which I think Russell's the you know happiest driver of, of his looks back on his year. But they both weren't happy really, and the team wasn't happy. So I've got them in seventh happiest, the sixth happiest team. Aston Martin, now they started really happy. You know, yeah, and they was on the podium. They're all smiles. Um, and guess which Green team's got the, got the biggest gap between their drivers on the grid? <laughs> yep. Fernando Alonso was an average of 0. 0.382 seconds faster than Lance. You've got to go do something. You know, stroll stroll well, off into the sunset. So well, also the team, pretty the team happiness. Because of the Lance issue, because you know, everybody's looking, you know, your team, you He's go home, you, you meet. He's a sloppy git as well, isn't he? Yeah. You meet your friends socially, if you're an Aston Martin mechanic, and they can, they'll all be saying, you know, why have you got Daddy's Boy still? So, I mean, it must wear them down having Daddy's Boy in one of the cars. It can't don't, knock, make... don't, don't knock my mate Lance. Good for Lance, <laughs> I say. Team Lance. So, and of course, Fernando not happy at the end of the year either, moaning about his engine power, wasn't he, where he was out last? And he's well, he finished, he finished line. on the podium, didn't he finish on the I podium? I know, yeah, but yeah. he was back to his moaning old old self as soon as he's not winning. So I think Aston Martin's sixth happiest team. <clears throat> OK. Uh, the fifth happiest team, Ferrari. I mean, because, oh, you know, the Italian shoulders. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know whether to put them higher or lower, because they live in Italy, which must make them happy. Um, Leclerc came out 0.189 faster than Carlos Sainz. 
but just too much bad team orders, too much not getting the results. I mean, they came out towards the end of the season. Leclerc had a very good end, didn't he? But he, he could have won both the last two races. So it, that's why I thought it should be high. Pure, pu- purely season, team, didn't... I agree. Purely team strategy there that let them down yeah. um, and bad decisions. You're right. Yeah. But um, high up, my, my third and fourth place, probably most controversial, fourth place, although they were only eighth in the point. I put Alpha Tauri as the fourth happiest team. Um, they live in Italy, which is good. That always makes me happy if I'm down in Italy. It's got a good natural feel. And it was sort of... Because I think Yuki... I like Yuki Sonoda. I think he's always got a smile. He, he moans and bitches. But he's quicker than anyone else thinks. He's very... He's underrated in my book. He out-qualified all three of his um, <laughs> of his co-drivers. Yeah, he out-qualified Nick De Vries by 0.228. He out-qualified the very impressive Lawson, who would have brought a very good field fact to the team. I think that would have surged the team up with having Lawson in. But he out-qualified him 0.141. And then your team's got to be made happier if you've got Daniel Ricciardo in a seat. Uh, and Yuki out qualified Daniel by 0.120. So I think, you know, they had a very good last race of the season, Yuki leading for a while. So I think at the end of the year, the Alpha Tauri boys will be drinking some nice Chianti and have been very happy in it. A lemon che- little lemon cello. Oh, that looks lovely. Um, the third happiest team, the most unusual perhaps, I'll put Williams up there. Again, the dry Alex Albon has just got to be the, the best interview driver, always smiling, oh, always saying lad. what he thinks, no lovely political lad. correctness. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I've lifted him the William and also the Williams team has got that wonderful you know history and you know from Williams and carrying on the carrying on the, the history of the team. Um, yes, Logan Sargent was the second biggest gap after Lance Stroll, 0.346 behind Alex Albon, but he got closer towards the end. So again, and I think the fact that Williams have kept him, the, the team must like him. I think, you know, I mentioned that earlier when I said he's, he stayed on. So I think they're a happy camp. A, li- a little team, punching above their weight, qualifying quite high up quite often, um, and having some good races when the tyre and degradation they couldn't handle and Alex would drop back. So I think Williams boys in Grove are the third happiest team probably oh. you know but out there um, then it's either the top who's going to come first uh, M- uh, McLaren or Red Bull uh, who's it going to be I put Red Bull second happiest good. good simply because of the Perez issue I mean they would be by far the happiest you know of everything that Max did and all the bonuses because they get huge bonuses every member of the team gets financial bonuses for points one and stuff I presume that still works definitely did in the past but just a Perez question must have dragged everyone down all year long he was the third biggest gap so Stroll's the biggest gap Sargent's the second biggest gap Perez 0.322 behind Max on an average and you know that's got to believe it's, especially the field, you, know, you have the sort of the two garages. Obviously, there's a lot of um, competition, isn't it, between the mechanics, you know, the Perry's team and the Max team. And you know, the Perry's team have got to be, oh, yeah. and that must drag everyone else down. That's funny. They can't be the happiest team simply because, of, and all, we all take the piss out of Horner and everybody else as well. So, so yeah, so McLaren has to be the top of the pot. <laughs> uh, it's got to be the McLaren team. I mean, the way they've improved during the year, the way Oscar Piastri has been this fantastic breath of fresh air. Uh, Lando Norris, also a great character, always laughing, and smiling lovely, and, lovely. and honest. Honest, takes blame on his shoulders, doesn't try and bluff his way out of a corner when he's had a bad qualifying session. So, yeah, I put McLaren as the happiest team uh, of the Christmas lunch. And it's funny you say so, um, team because it is about the team because McLaren got yeah. the fastest pit stop of the season as well, 1.8 yeah. seconds. So it's, it, it is very much a team. But yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I would change Haas. I would put much uh, further to the top because I just think they're punching above their weight anyway. They don't, they're not expected yeah. to do anything. And but Alpine, and, uh, do you know what? On reflection, Alpine, I probably would have put 10th and then Ferrari 8th mm, or ninth. So uh, that's the only changes. Yeah. But yeah, definitely McLaren, uh, the happiest team in Formula One. I agree with that. <laughs> So happy Christmas to the boys that were in Woking, Surrey. Uh, happy Bill, Red, Red Bull boys. Red Bull boys are in Oxford, aren't they? We're Bista. Williams boys in Grove. Mil- Milton Rancho. Keynes. Milton Keynes for Red Bull. Fourth place, Alfa Tauri uh, down in Italy, along with the Ferrari in fifth. Aston Martin boys at Silverstone will be having probably have a good Christmas lunch. Mr. Stroll will be buying the round. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he won't. 
The miserable Mercedes boys, seventh place. Of course, they're in Brooklyn. Sauerkraut. Seventh, seventh yeah. place. They can't be happy. They'll be looking for them. LP down in eighth. The French, yeah, they come on. Come on, France. That wasn't good, was it? Um, Haas ninth to me and, and Alfa Romeo tenth. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. A little happy. Instead of looking at just points, I just thought, just thought, where's the happiest place to be? That's important, isn't it? And I think that happiness also makes the car go quicker. You need a bit of positivity and a bit of joy in the team. So, so, we've, so we've, we've already we started this show by mentioning some uh, TV stuff. We're doing some other TV stuff. And one of the countries that we're looking to film in is Bhutan. They measure success in happiness. They, they, they got they got no um, GDP, gross domestic product. They got excuse produce. me, excuse me, that excuse me, that gross excuse, national excuse me, happiness. Dad. Where's Bhutan? Uh, on the foothills of the Himalayas. Ah. So it's, a, it's it's beautiful, stunning, and it's all about happiness. So um, um, so watch this space for happiness. So there you go. That's a nice <laughs> nice link there, Tiff. We, uh, we decide to be happy. And, and it's hard, though, when you've got no money. And... Well, there's a happy story <laughs> in Extreme E. We finally, after all our reviews of the year, the only motorsport of international thing last weekend was the Chili Copper x Prix. Which we have normally mocked anyway, but it's a lovely news from that is that Jenny Gow, who had the awful stroke, the commentator of yeah. the BBC, she was back in the commentary box uh, for the Chile Grand Prix. So well done, Jenny. Welcome back. Uh, terrible to recover from a stroke. But um, it was actually a dramatic finish to their championship, if not in a slightly ridiculous and bizarre manner. <laughs> Because two teams came in really with a, of really winning the championship. That was the Rosberg X Racing team of Johan Christofferson and Michaela Achlin Kotolinski. They had a points lead ahead of the uh, Axioni Sainz team, Carlos Sainz's team of Matches Ekstrom and Le Leia Sainz. No relation, but a very, very talented motorcyclist. She started off doing the sort of Dakar stuff and trials. Um, and they went to the final race, not many points apart. I can't remember. Commentators shouted everything whatever he said, but it ended up that um, <laughs> uh, Christofferson in the X racing car went wide, went up on two wheels on the opening laps and punched a tar and had to make a pit stop, only a four lap race. They were out of it. So therefore the championship was going to go to the Axiona Science team, obviously. Elias Science just had to get to the finish, but I think she felt pressured to lead because I think if X the ex Rosberg team who got up to third, they might have had more points. But she had a big spin in second place and then and then tried to get back. There might have been something wrong with the car because uh, they do break a lot. Anyway, she ended up rolling the thing, getting back on track after the second spin. So she's now upside down. Well, <laughs> and going nowhere, obviously. Well, the Rosberg team with um, Michaela back at the wheel because the driver changed. She's driving round and not only is that the front puncture, but the front right steering arm had gone. So she's got one wheel steering, trying to get around the corners, pulling the handbrake. She's going about 20 miles an hour, a lap down. But if she can now get to the finish line, they will get more points than the science team. So literally you have one team hanging upside down. <laughs> They didn't bother to, I don't even know one of the five race, because they didn't bother to even film whoever was out front. And meanwhile, they just concentrated on, on Michaela going round at five, ten miles an hour to limp to the finish line to claim the championship. So uh, <laughs> Rosberg X Racing <laughs> took the title, oh. whereas the, the science team must have been crying in their paella because um, <laughs> they, they were hanging upside down. So... It was actually quite a good track as well. Another couple of them. Really oh. fast, open with some big jumps, but some big fast corners where you can go side by side. A lot of the circuits, they always have to go, there's a section where they have to go single file. Yeah. There's no other line, yeah. you know. And then they fall back because you go single file, you get dust. You can't follow closely. Whereas uh, it was a good track. No, Nobody good. watching, of course. I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere in a, in a copper field. Um, What's a how copper field? Watch copper, copper mine, Copper mine field, yeah. What yeah. Copper, field? copper, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but the best he's a Jenny Cow was great. But uh, yeah, he's a magician. Copperfield. And that's it for the year. Are we gonna, are we coming back next week? Are we gonna what break know, the people? The people want us. The people want us back. I don't, oh, do you, I don't yeah, let us know. know. I, yeah, join yeah, the three. Yeah, please. Yeri, Yeri won't <laughs> want us back. Will you, Yeri? <laughs> Happy Christmas, Yeri. By the way, thanks for all your positive well, and negative we are, confidence. Yeri, we are we like Max you. Verstappen fans in terms of. Well, I am. I speak it's for talent. myself. It's, it's just his character. He's got yeah. a Marmite. Yeri, do you know what Marmite is, Yeri? <laughs> it's either you love him or hate him. 
yeah. And it's not and just Yari, it's his everybody. Character, his yeah. character is a bit marmite. And, you know, sometimes he's a bit arrogant. And sometimes you don't like what he says. But Yari, don't worry. He's the most talented driver on the planet at the moment. In the right car. Happy Christmas. <laughs> see so, so might see you next if, week, I hope so. We might see. If we find anything to talk about, <laughs> check out Monday night. If not, have a happy, happy Christmas. Cheers, cheers, all. cheers. Oh, and watch previous series of Love Cars on the Road on the IT we'll put the link, Hub. We'll, we'll put the link below as well. Thanks link for joining. Below. Cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. <laughs>